and we are in Volvo and Scandinavian weather. Wow, look at this snow, it's amazing. When you're a motoring journalist or a mojo, there are a handful of questions that you get asked quite often. Have you met Jeremy Clarkson? Have you met Joey from Friends? <laughs> Can you get me a discount on a What is your favourite car? My answers are always no, 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 and Proton Savvy. But also the Volvo XC90, seriously, which was by far the best car that I drove in 2015. So I had high hopes for this, the XC60. A car that some mojos might call a Junior XC90. You know, because it looks a lot like an XC90, but it's a bit smaller. Clever. In the XC60 here, we basically have the essence of my favorite car of 2015, condensed. That's another thing you hear quite a lot in it when they call the smaller one a boil washed version of the bigger one. But what better way of describing the XC60 than with a jumper stain removal catastrophe euphemism because the XC60 is indeed very much the shrunken down XC90. The XC60 is of course smaller in every direction but you'll notice that it's a bit less slab sided than the XC90 with a stronger shoulder line over the rear wheel arch and to get technical a sort of kicked up backside. So it looks that bit more dynamic and I think better. But it's not actually that much smaller really. We're talking that much shorter and about a spiral's worth less height and width. Which begs the question, why bother buying an XC90? And the more you look at it, the more that question seems legit. Very legit. In fact, for a start, it's much more reasonably priced. Look at the starting prices here and you'll see that there's a Ford Fiesta size difference between the two. So whereas the XC90 is priced as a proper luxury SUV, the XC60 is more in the realms of a fancy pants crossover. You know, mid-level 4x4 stuff from the posh manufacturers. Or even big SUVs from the not so posh ones. And in that sense, the XC60 is beautifully pitched in that it feels more comfortable, more pleasant and plusher than every one of those cars. Not only has Volvo made this look like the XC90, it feels like it too. This is without doubt the most relaxing driving experience of any of the medium sized SUVs. I'm pretty sure that Volvo benchmarked this car against hanging out in a spa. We'll come back to that. Firstly, let's look at how practical the XC60 is. Now, things look like they might start to unravel here because as you can see, when it comes to outright boot literage, the XC60 kind of falls behind a little bit. Just for reference, it's not actually that much bigger than the boot volume of a Peugeot 308. But look at this boot with its flat floor, its massive hatchback, its clever luggage cover, various hooks and holding devices, and its hydraulically adjustable load height. See, size isn't everything. Make joke about... It's all the boot you'll probably ever need. And of course, you get all the other fat hatchback accoutrements, like a split folding rear bench, and lots of headroom, and lots of leg space at the back. This feels like a big car. And so, to the XC60's not-so-secret weapon, the cabin. Wow! Wow, indeed. This feels virtually identical to the XC90's cabin, which I happen to think is one of the best interiors of any car at any price. It follows then that for a mid-level-ish SUV, this interior feels fairly spectacular. It's beautiful, it's high quality, and it's calming. Even the lower level stuff is soft touch, unlike in, say, a Range Rover Velar. And this big screen here has clearly been designed by somebody who understands that everybody has a smartphone these days. It looks great, it's easy to use, and it's standard fit, as is a lot of stuff. Look. This is the basic car, you know, the 36 grand one. The only thing this car feels like it's missing is an automatic gearbox, and you can sort that out for about a grand and a half. The upshot is that for less than 40 grand, you can have yourself an SUV that feels truly luxurious and truly a bit special. And unlike virtually all of the other premium manufacturers, Volvo hasn't even tried to make this feel sporty. Well, it's got selectable driving modes, but that's probably only because Volvo felt like it had to do it because it's what everybody else does. I mean, setting this car to dynamic is like putting an elasticated waistband and a zip on a tuxedo and then calling it a tracksuit. 
If you blind tested this against the Range Rover, you'd really struggle to tell them apart. They've got the same sort of soft, light approach to everything. You know, that sense of floating an inch above the road, and the super light steering and the high set sense of safety. Oh yeah, that. This being a Volvo, it is of course extremely stuffed with lots of safety kit. In fact, the safety section of the standard equipment list on the Volvo website is the biggest one, which of course is the benchmark by which car safety should be measured. Less important, but worth mentioning, is its five-star Euro MCAP safety rating. So, as I was saying, Oh yeah, comfort, that's right. This is very comfortable, sometimes to a fault. Like the steering's so light and easy going that it quite often feels like to get around a corner, you've got to give it an extra half a turn, which is a bit annoying sometimes. And the throttle response is quite sluggish. So it sometimes makes pulling away feel a bit clumsy. But none of that really overshadows a car that feels like it's supposed to be driven, like you've got nowhere to be. And bonus, if you do that, you're unlikely to be reminded that you're in a four-cylinder diesel. You probably are anyway. There are four engines to choose from, two diesels, and another two that really aren't worth thinking about. The diesels you can see here, both of the four-cylinder variety and the D4 promising 60 miles per gallon. But the D5 here is the one you'll want. It's a bit noisy, yes, because it's a diesel, but it's proper punchy, which I can't show you because the ground's so slippy, but it is. And as four-cylinder diesels go, it's not that offensive to the ears. And if you have a real aversion to diesel, which would be fair enough in the current climate, there is the T5 petrol. It's quick and it's quiet, but it's also a 30 miles per gallon car at best in reality. And finally, there's the T8 twin engine, which if you're anything like me, you'll be disappointed to note isn't a petrol and a diesel brought together at last. But rather it's a petrol electric hybrid that claims 135 miles per gallon, but that's a lie. But over and above all this engine and trim stuff is the fact that whatever version you buy, this is a haptic wet dream. Everything you look at and touch in this car is just mint. Like the turn switch that you start the engine with and the best infotainment software in any car ever and the alluring contours of the seats and the big knurled knob for the volume controls and the beautiful wood. Time to stop. In conclusion, what's your favorite car of 2017? This one. Bye. We've got proper snow on this road so we can see whether this actually works. And of course, it's skinned around all over the place and that's because it's probably on summer tires. And there's a lesson for you. All wheel drive makes diddly squat difference if your tires aren't up with the job.